Lord Jesus, you are so romantic. Even with your bride, fresh from the battlefield, broken and bruised, yet you long for her company. Please help us make this sacred time each day and allow nothing to deprive us of it. Today was so very special, heart dwellers, as Jesus made himself visible to me all day long. And when I came into prayer, he was waiting for me and was totally set on dancing with me. I didn't see what I was wearing because all I could see was his white garment and face, and my head was on his shoulder, and that's all I wanted to see, his face, and to look into his eyes and see how deeply he loves me. I swoon even to think of it. I want you, my people, to get back to being brides, Jesus began. I want to dance with you and enjoy your tender gaze into my eyes. All of you have been very busy on the battlefield, whether you are aware of it or not. This has been a season of perpetual fighting and defending. You have learned much and are putting it into practice. But I do not want you to forget how precious and beautiful you are to me. There still will come a day when I adorn you in the finest silk garments with garlands of flowers a day when your guardian angel will lead you to the altar to give you away to me, your forever bridegroom. Oh, how I look forward to this day, brilliant and full of splendor, my betrothed will finally come to my home and be with me forever. But I'm telling you now to remind you that not only do we have a working relationship, but a romantic one as well. I am head over heels in love with you, my brides, and I don't want my love for you obscured by the ongoing spiritual battles. There is a time for war, and there is a time for love, and truly, you have been fighting long and hard against the enemy. Times are needed for refreshment and rededication to our spousal relationship. There are times when I only want to dance with you, sit in the garden and take in your sweet love. In those times, I also want to fill you with divine sweetness and the fragrance of my love. I want to capture your heart all over again and draw you to myself. I want your precious head to rest upon my chest and receive the river of love that awaits you. Is it not written? You are beautiful, my darling, beautiful beyond words. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. Your hair falls in waves like a flock of goats winding down the slopes of Gilead. Your teeth are as white as sheep, recently shorn and freshly washed. Your smile is flawless, each tooth matched with its twin. Your lips are like a scarlet ribbon. Your mouth is inviting. Your cheeks are like rosy pomegranates behind your veil. You are altogether beautiful, my darling. Beautiful in every way. That's from the Song of Songs. The Lord continued, There are no words for me to communicate how beautiful and desirable you are to me. I do not see your imperfections. I see only your love and devotion. On this earth, the most wonderful experience you can have is to truly be fully accepted and deeply loved just for who you are, to be understood and known and loved no matter what your faults. It is the God form within you, the form you were given before you were sent to earth, the form that originated in the heart of my Father, perfect in every way that I see when you return to me and accept me as your spouse. Yes, it is then that your original perfection manifests as I restore you to who he created you to be. It is through me, aided by the river of graces that I pour into you, that you are restored to the purity of heaven once again, and you are home, truly home, returning from your exile. How can I ever begin to explain to you 
the loveliness of your person, my bride. There are simply no words, but you are glorious to behold as you return from this earth. There has been a very long season of fighting for those of you who have been on this channel for many years. And for newcomers, you are not as well grounded in the espousal relationship as they are. It has been a bloody war with a lot of casualties, and you have endured valiantly. But you mustn't forget who you are to me, the spouse of my heart. That time you spend with me has many different facets. For those of you who have embraced the early church, or are ordained, you understand my real presence in contemplation of my body and blood in the consecrated host. Truly, I and my divinity am fully present to you in the physical realm. What you perceive outwardly as bread and wine, through faith you see me as I truly am, but under the appearance of bread and wine. Oh, how I long for you to keep me company there. So many who have this precious gift available to them do not realize how I long for their company. You have my presence in worship and in tongues when you press into prayer. You have my presence when you choose wisely the songs that minister in depth to your heart and my heart. You have my presence in thanksgiving when in the depths of your heart you recognize my endless goodness to you. My bride, you have my presence in more ways than I can enumerate, even that quiet voice in your heart that guides you because truly I live inside of you, dear one. You have my presence when the trees rustle in a gentle breeze, as well as when my angels do battle with the evil ones in the heavens and lightning shakes the earth. In more ways than you can enumerate, my precious one, I am with you. So as you are preparing to fight battles, learning about spiritual warfare and triumphing even over your own flesh. Do not forget the one who is in love with you. Do not forget that I cherish and adore you as the spouse of my heart. And most of all, do not forget to keep me company and shut the world out where it belongs so that our times together can be protected and uninterrupted. Will you do this for me, my bride? Will you? You are not alone in this endeavor. I will help you. Be sensitive to my call and acutely aware of how Satan will steal it from you under the guise of a better good. Yes, you will be opposed each time you draw nigh unto me. You will be fought and condemned with false guilt. You will be called selfish and self-preoccupied, not caring about the needs of others even snobbish. You will have many labels stuck on you, but all you need to do is recognize you have only one master, one love, one responsibility, and that is to please me. If you hold to this standard, I will make appropriate time for relatives and others. Do not let their name tags dissuade you. My banner over you is beloved spouse of my heart. That is the only label appropriate to you. I bless you now with this grace. Embrace our intimate love and be relentless in carving out and protecting this time so priceless that even the angels envy you. And that was the end of his message. And I want to just qualify something. When he says intimate love, he's not talking about carnal, physical love. He's talking about intimate spiritual love. The Lord is forever a virgin and is always, always proper with his bride. God bless you, heart dwellers. Thank you for donating and helping us in our project. The Lord gave you his sweet and tender love and help you to recognize the tools of the enemy to steal that time from you. Amen.